Welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cody. If you've never been to this segment, welcome. This is the segment called Power Prompts. And here on Power Prompts, we invite everyone and anyone to help you through all of your creative art block every week. And uh, every month we have a, a theme where we pick out Wow, you guys, I am struggling through this intro and I'm gonna do that again. Let's re-roll one second. Hang on. Again, everyone, welcome to Power Prompts. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today. My name is Cody. Hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> Do over, yes, exactly, Claire. C clever, welcome. Power Prompts. <laughs> I was mixing up my intros from my last show to now. Power Prompts. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> today has been a day. <laughs> Welcome everyone, welcome. Power prompts. Every month we have a theme. We have a theme every month and we make prompts every week for that theme. Wow, I did it. Okay, you guys, I am so sorry. Wow, brain issues. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Hello, Gareth, Bliss, Julie. I'm so sorry for the flubs today. Holy crap. <laughs> hey, Sam, welcome. Becca, welcome. Uh, thank you all so much. I was also, before we went live, laughing at the fact that Sam said that Power Pumps needs uh, to have a rockin' 80s uh, action cartoon theme song, and I totally agree. Powerful prompts, yes. The prompts are so powerful, I can't do my intro very well today. That is how powerful they are. Welcome, welcome. It's Monday, I know, Monday brain. Oh my goodness. Uh, Anthony, hello. Today, our prompt, um, well, for the last month, our prompt theme has been medieval, medieval March. And today our prompt is going to be Sword in the Stone. Um, it, but before we head over to the artwork that we're gonna be working on today, I wanted to pop on over and show you guys the finished piece of uh, our previous prompt, which was night. And so we last uh, stream, we went through a little bit of the animation tools in Fresco. And I wanted to show you guys the final piece because I'm actually really proud of it. Um, I, it took a little bit of finessing for a while to get the flag animation just right, but I'm really happy with it. And I wanted to thank you guys for like helping me through it and, and on the last stream. Um, and I think it was a lot of fun uh, just kind of getting through the first stages of kind of learning the uh, animation tools in Fresco. Um, and yeah, so also if you guys uh, would like to continue to uh, post your own knights as well as your own sword in the stones, which is your which is our prompt for today, feel free to do so. You can upload it online with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts, um, and you can also post it in the Photoshop Discord um, under the channel Power Prompts. All right, you guys. So we can go ahead and get into our. Uh, artwork today. Um, so like I said, we're going to be working on Sword in the Stone. And so I started the sketch ahead of time. And usually, if you guys have been here for the last couple of episodes, you'll know that I have you vote on something. The first um, the first stream we did, we had I had you guys vote on the composition and the color palette. And the last one, I had you guys vote on the accent color for the bear. 
And this time, if you notice, my sword does not have a hilt. So I did a few different designs and I want you guys to vote on the hilt design. Let me pull it up for you one second. So here are the three options. You guys can just throw um, in chat one, two, or three, so you can vote for which hilt design you would like me to use for our Excalibur. Love the ears flapping. Yeah, honestly, Umicorn, that is probably my favorite part of the animation. I think it adds a lot of character to it. Love the animation. Thank you so much. It's, it turned out great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really like it. And I hope to see um, you guys, you know, working with animation as well, um, along with your entries. I would it would be so cool to see you guys, you know, start dabbling in those uh, those fresco animation tools. We got to vote for one, two, one, one, three. Ooh, looks like one's winning so far. One. Ooh, we got got a lot of ones. Yeah, I kind of, I know, or I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna say I know, but I'm pretty sure. The lore is that Excalibur is kind of not a very ornate sword. Um, I believe that the hilt um, is relatively simplistic, um, but if we wanted to do our own take on Excalibur, we can also you know, add some flair to it if we really wanted to. But I just thought I'd throw that out there just in case a little bit of tidbit, fun fact if you guys didn't know. <laughs> I like the classic look of two, three, a uh, two, two is quite good also, two all day long. Oh, wow. Okay. So definitely between one and two. Um, let's see. I, I think, oh, another, another vote for one, two is nice also. I think, I think I'm going to go with two. I think I'm going to go with two, you guys. Um, so I, I changed my vote to two. Okay, cool. So I am going to go ahead and just grab this so I don't have to redraw it. I'm just gonna uh, highlight this with my little um, selector tool here and I can go over to the layer and then I can uh, duplicate selection and I'm gonna hide the rest of these votes, the vote layer, and I can just go ahead and pop it right there on our sword. There we go, now our sword has a hilt. It's like he was missing a, his hat and now he has his hat. Cool. Yeah, I like that, that looks nice. Good job guys, good choice. <laughs> okay, so if you'll notice that I actually colored in the trees, the majority of this stream is going to be my coloring process. However, the reason that I did the trees ahead of time is because I'm actually not very good at drawing trees, you guys. Trees are so difficult to draw. They're so difficult to draw. Um, and for me, when I sketch trees, they never turn out well. I usually have to block the shape in for the silhouette, like just with color, instead of sketching them with lines. I don't know if you, you maybe any of you guys can relate to that. Um, but I've just come to discover that about myself. I always tried so hard to sketch trees and it just never worked out. So I just kind of leaned into what did work for me and uh, blocking in the shapes worked. So I wanted to do that ahead of time. However, I might throughout the stream at some point, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a lesson on how I do in fact draw trees. Um, and just like draw like a handful of different like tree silhouette shapes, maybe like some different like oak trees and then pine trees, uh, different silhouettes. Um, so we will get to that at some point. Um, but up until until we get to that, I am going to go ahead and start coloring. Uh, Sam says, yeah, blocking the shape in trees is easier for me too. Certain things are easier with shape. Yeah, exactly. Um, I feel that way um, just like with hands as well. I am so much better at drawing hands if I just block the shape in whatever whatever um, like position the hand is in. I just start kind of blocking it in instead of trying so hard to get all of my, my lines correct. Um, so yeah, if you guys are struggling with hands, maybe try blocking in the shapes as well. Um, okay, 
So I started with kind of just like this minty color here in the background. And I was trying to maybe create a little bit of depth. As you can see, um, the image overall has kind of a greenish tint, uh, like kind of like a green blue tint. Um, and that's kind of just because I wanted it to basically feel like a forest, of course. So like with trees, they're going to have a lot of green leaves. And so the atmosphere will have a lot of that reflected light in the air. So um, when you're doing like a forest scene, maybe you could you could even do um, like an atmosphere of blue tint or green tint. This time I kind of just went with what I felt worked. I, I almost went with like a more like dark hunter forest green, but I decided to go with uh, like this teal color and the mint sage color. Um, we'll see how it works out. If not, it's okay. We can just change it up as we go because that's the great thing about um, uh, uh, digital art. So building up this background here, I considered putting some bushes in the back to kind of like um, define the horizon a little bit more. We could do that. I might do that. We could experiment with that. Um, but I might also maybe throw in some bushes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I dropped this color of the tree in the background. If you notice the, the trees in the foreground are a lot darker um, and they're a lot more cool toned than the trees in the background. And the trees in the background are very similar to the background color um, because the farther away it gets, the more um, it kind of absorbs that uh, atmospheric color. Um, so I'm actually going to make those bushes the same color as the tree, but maybe just a little bit lighter. So let's lighten that up. Um, and I also tend to uh, use the HSB sliders when I'm choosing colors. So as you guys can see, I'll go back there. So I selected the background tree color, the sage color, and I really love the HSB sliders because for me personally, it I feel like I get more control with the HSB sliders rather than the color wheel. So I personally don't use the color wheel. Um, I really like to just be able to lighten something and desaturate or saturate something just with the sliders. So that's typically what I do. So I'm actually going to put the bushes behind the trees, I think. So, and I'm going to grab my Kyle Webster Conte crayon <laughs> Rob says, CJ, I'm all about fitness. Fitness burger in my mouth. Oh man, me too. I, I would love a burger right now. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I might actually lighten this up a tad more just so we have a little bit more contrast with the trees, but I don't want it to be too light that we can't see it anymore against the background. So we're going to find a, a happy medium basically. That looks pretty good. So the way that I do bushes, I'm kind of still trying to figure out how I like drawing bushes. Um, I kind of like change it up every once in a while, but I kind of typically will start with like a cloud shape almost like, like a typical way that like a little kid would draw a cloud, just like a, a fluffy like scallop shapes. And then I'll color that in and we will add some kind of like leaf details around the edge to kind of break up that scallop shape. How's your guys' week going, by the way? Um, or weekend, how was your weekend? Clearly um, my Monday is just going a certain way with the way that I did the intro to this stream. I hope you all are having a great uh, week and you don't have a case of the Mondays. <laughs> okay, so now we have that little shape going on there. Um, actually, I just realized I have this like extending branch from one of these trees in the background. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and erase that because it's not really serving us very well. It's kind of just, ruining the silhouette of the foreground tree, we're not gonna miss it. I think that looks better without it. 
Um, I might maybe pop in just a little bit of that bush there in the background. See now, now we have like a clear defined background um, just by adding that very simple scallop shape there. Becca says, I've got the Mondays for sure. Oh no. <laughs> All right. So to make this look a little bit more like a bush, I'm actually going to add just like very simple leaf shapes. Let's make our brush a little bit smaller. Very simple leaf shapes, all kind of angled in different directions. And maybe just like, like half leaf shapes too. So it kind of looks like the leaf is folded a little bit maybe. We'll add in some leaf shapes up all around the edge of this bush. Hey, Steven, welcome. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. And then also, you guys, we can, let's see, I might draw in a little bit more there and maybe one more here. There, now it's broken up and it looks a little bit more like leaves. Hey, Wade, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining. Good to see you. <laughs> Steve says, I bypassed Monday and it's Tuesday here now. That's so true. You're in the future. You are in the future. Finally able to catch one of these live. Good to see you, Wade. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> okay, so also on top of adding leaves to the bushes in the background with this same color, I'm also going to add some falling leaves as well to kind of break up the monotony of the solid background color. Oh, also you guys, I forgot to mention that later in the stream, we are going to be checking out some of your awesome entries on Instagram. We have quite a few Sword in the Stones entries, which for some reason I was thinking that we weren't gonna get a ton of entries. And I wasn't sure if you guys were like even really fully interested in a subject like this, but we got a lot of entries. So that's really awesome. Thank you guys for, for participating. It's really fun. And then I also, you guys, like to add in not only the falling leaves, but we can also just add in some like floating leaves above the bush. It doesn't have to always make sense, especially if you're going with like a very simplistic style like mine. Um, you'd be surprised what illustrators can get away with um, in terms of making their art like not necessarily fit reality. Um, so just to kind of like add a little bit more like volume to the bush here, I'm going to add in some leaves that look like they could be connected to the bush, but they're not actually connected. Like so. Hey, Odari, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Okay, then I am also going to fill out the trees as well. So once we start filling out these trees, we're really going to get a sense of like kind of closure and um, just like a feeling of like, be this is a sword is being encompassed by the, um, by the trees. So I'm actually going to go back to the mid-ground tree level, the kind of like darker sage green, same layer, same color, just use the eyedrop color to grab the 
uh, tree color. And I am just going to go ahead and um, draw in some leaves on this layer. Now, if you notice, I'm doing the leaves the same color as the tree. That might seem kind of weird. It's like, okay, well, your trees are green and your your leaves are the same color as the tree would. Like, that doesn't really make sense. That's kind of weird. Um, really, why I'm doing it is to keep it pushed back in the background. We don't, th this these trees in the background, we don't need to see every single detail. Like our brain fills in the gaps and helps us understand that because we can read that silhouette of the tree, it makes sense to us. We don't necessarily need to have the color attached to the tree to know that it's a tree. And it keeps it, once we start adding the color to the main focus of the illustration, it, I think it will maybe make more sense too as we continue with this, because I'm going to be using typical colors for the rock and the sword um, so it'll really pop against the background. Okay, so just continuing to add some leaves in here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I might add in like a couple in the gaps here between the, the, the tree branches. Um, let's see, maybe like one like here and here. And I'm going to save everyone. Don't forget to save your work as well. Um, I know that Fresco, if you're working in Fresco, it auto saves, but it's always just best to just do a hard save every once in a while. It's always a good habit to have just in case something happens, you know, always good. Um, okay, so we are going to continue on. Now we're gonna go to the foreground and we're going to add leaves there as well. Um, let's see here, what layer is this? Okay, we'll keep that there. I'm actually gonna take this layer because it's a sketch layer. We're just gonna bring that out and I'm gonna bring this out as well. Don't need this extra group we got going on here. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the foreground, but we're gonna obviously do the color of the trees in the foreground. So we're gonna add some leaves. I didn't realize you can manually save in Fresco. Oh yeah, so um, if you guys don't know how to manually save in Fresco, you just tap on the, uh, see that on the top bar, you have the uh, file name here and there's a little drop down arrow right next to it. So that brings out this little uh, pop-out window and you can press save now. And this is also how you change your file name as well. So save now. And also, fun fact too, if you notice when I make a mark, there's uh, the little asterisk next to the file name. That means that you have work that hasn't been saved. So if I go to save, that asterisk goes away. So you'll know, like, if like you're like, oh, I don't know if I've saved recently. If the little asterisk is there, you'll know that you can just go ahead and save. Um, okay, so let's pop in some leaves here. I don't want to take too much time on the leaves, but I think that putting them in will help kind of, like I said, get a sense of um, kind of just like, almost coziness in the space because it kind of just feels a little bit more enclosed like we're really in a forest. And for those of you that are just coming in as well, if uh, you're uh, curious about um, what brush I'm using, I am using uh, Kyle T. Webster's Conte Crayon. 
And you can find that in the mega pack. And if you would like to download his brushes, you can just open the brush menu and then go down to the bottom and press the plus button and uh, just go to discover new brushes and you can uh, like follow his brushes and download his brushes. And they are also compatible with Photoshop as well. So that's part of the reason why I really love working in Fresco is that the brushes that I, <clears throat> the brushes that I use in Photoshop carry over to Fresco. So I don't even have to change anything about my um, workflow or anything like that. It just, it just kind of works. Okay, so I might pop in some extra leaves here on the top to kind of give a sense of these trees have a larger canopy than we can actually see currently. You can never have too many brushes. That is very true. I'm sure Kyle believes that as well because he's made thousands of brushes. <laughs> thousands of brushes. He has such a huge selection for you guys. I also, later in the stream, might give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of next month's prompt list. I just created it last night, so might be showing that off later as well. Gonna reveal the theme for next month. If you guys have any guesses for what next, next month's theme is, drop them in chat. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll put one like here. Nah, that's a little bit too bulky of a shape. I don't wanna ruin the tree silhouette too much. Eggs, bunnies, and chocolate. <laughs> Does the theme change every month? Yes, uh, on Power Prompts, we have a different theme every month. And then every Monday we have a prompt uh, surrounding that theme. So this month we had uh, Medieval March and you can see our prompt list down below uh, my webcam here. Um, so we've done Dragon, we did Night last week and now we're on Sword in the Stone and next Monday is going to be Apothecary Herbs. Um, and then once April starts, uh, the first Monday in April, we will start on our next prompt list. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Might add in like maybe some falling leaves here. Cool, okay, save. And I think I am going to go ahead for one, I'm gonna go back to these mid-ground trees and I am going to change my brush to clear mode. If you guys don't know how to do that on Fresco, I use this on Photoshop a lot. Um, sometimes I'm too lazy and I'll just use a hard round brush for an eraser, but most of the time, if I'm using a textured brush, you wanna be able to erase with that same texture, right? So uh, to be able to do this on Fresco, you go to this little, this little pop-out menu here and go to the bottom for the brush settings and then go to blend mode and then go to clear. And so now I can actually paint in clear mode with that same brush. So it basically turns your brush into an eraser. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clean up the bottom of these trees here a little bit, I think. I might, let's see, I'm gonna go back to normal. I'm gonna grab this color. Also, if you guys don't know how to use the eyedropper tool in Fresco as well, just tap your finger and hold it on the screen for a couple seconds and it'll bring up the eyedropper tool. Very, very useful. So 
Just clean up the edges there a little bit. And I think also I'm going to cut into these bushes a little bit. I'm going to go back to clear mode. I'm going to go to clear. And then I'm also going to what I like, why I like doing clear mode, especially for these illustrations that um, have kind of like a very um, stark, uh, uh, solid background color. I was going to go in and kind of add in some of some little just like grass silhouette shapes here. And I like using clear mode or I'll do it on a separate layer sometimes and just use the background color. Um, but I like using the background color to because it kind of just blends right in. And I can do the same thing for the trees here as well. Just kind of give a sense that we have some some grass here on the ground without actually drawing any like serious amounts of grass. We're kind of just going to imply that there's grass. There we go. Okay. I think double clicking the circle indicator does the same thing. You know, to be to be completely honest with you guys, I actually haven't really used the circle indicator very much. I think it has erase with brush. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Becca. Let's try it. Um, so let's just go to like the foreground tree. So if I hold it here, Oh, and it erases. Oh my gosh, you are a lifesaver because I was thinking to myself, like it takes way too much time to go into the brush settings. That is so helpful. This is all on iPad, says Kyle. Yes, I am on the iPad Pro. Um, I have the uh, 11 inch iPad Pro and I also am using a Gen 2 Apple Pencil. Lifesaver, Becca, seriously, that is... That is going to help me and my workflow so much on Fresco. Okay. Um, I think also I might, let's see. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start working on the sword. Um, and I want, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the, the, um, the stone, I think. And to get a little bit better of a blend on my color, so I, I, I grabbed this gray color from my color palette, right? Uh, let's see. Normal. But it doesn't really, it's a little bit too warm, I think. Um, let's actually uh, lower the opacity on this sketch here a bit. Where'd my sketch layers go? There they are. Let's lower the opacity on this sketch. So I don't know. I, I personally feel like this gray color doesn't really go with this color palette very well. Um, but I'm going to block it in a bit. And I think I'm going to, what I'm going to try to do to make the color look a little bit more cohesive with the uh, color palette that we currently have is I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. And now I'm going to color pick that color. And now we're going to go back. We're going to lock the transparency of this layer. And then we're going to paint with that color. So basically, I kind of, in a way, blended a little bit of the background color in with the rock color. I might actually do that once again, just to get that color, just to kind of get like a little bit of that green tint in there. 
I might darken it and maybe I'll saturate it a little bit more. I think adding the saturation helps a lot. Uh, Kyle says, got, just got a uh, new iPad Air. I'm so pumped to try it. That's awesome. Congratulations. If you want to try out Fresco, it's free. Like, feel free to download it, even if you don't have a CC subscription. The only thing that you can't use without the CC sub is Kyle Webster's brushes, but Fresco is free to use. Um, but you also, if you have a CC sub, you get all of Kyle's brushes for free with the CC sub. So if you're considering Getting a CC sub if you don't already, that is definitely a huge perk. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna unlock the transparency here and I'm gonna just fill out this rock shape a little better. You guys, I am going to admit that um, rocks are probably <laughs> one of the biggest things that I struggle with drawing along with trees. And you would think that I would be better at drawing trees, but considering I draw them like all the time, but it just doesn't get easier. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of challenging myself here a little bit, drawing these rock shapes, um, trying to make them a little bit kind of like jaggedy. Uh, I didn't want it to be like a smooth boulder necessarily, but kind of like a little bit of a, a like chopped up boulder, like pieces of it have kind of come off like it has more of like sharp edges rather than like a smooth river rock. Um, and that's, I feel like where I struggle the most is making those natural um, boulder, like sharp edge shapes, like river rocks I can draw all day. But boulders are pretty difficult. Hey, Nina, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. I think I made the big part of the boulder a little bit too dark, so I'm just gonna lock the transparency. And a lot of the time, if I'm locking the transparency just to change a color, I will use hard round brush because it just goes so much faster. I might actually desaturate this just a tad. That's better. And I had, let's see. I had in the sketch um, some moss on top of the rock as well. So let's go ahead and add that in. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this sage color and we're gonna try to just uh, maybe make that color more saturated and darken it. And we'll see if that looks good as the color for the, um, for the moss to kind of just like keep it in line with the, the minimal color palette we're going with. <laughs> Wade says jaggedy is always my rock goals though. I know I definitely my rock goals as well, but I still struggle with it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm, I made a clipping mask. If you guys don't know how to make a clipping mask, I'll go ahead and redo that for you actually. Um, so I made a new layer over top of the layer that I wanna clip into. And on the left here uh, with this little drop down arrow in the square, you just press this button and now it's a clipping mask. So make sure you have that clipping mask highlighted. And sometimes I'll go back and lower the opacity of the base layer so I can see behind it. And then I'll highlight the clipping mask again. Oops, I'm still on hard round brush. Let's change our brush back. And we will throw in this mossy color. Clipping mask is great if you want to paint in a shape um, without going outside of that shape. Um, I remember years back when I first learned how to do clipping masks, it changed my workflow so much. It was just like so mind blowing 
to figure out how to finally do that in Photoshop. Um, and I've been using them ever since. I pretty much use clipping masks in every single piece that I do. This is definitely going to be, actually, you know what? I don't really like how my in my initial sketch, I kind of made the, the moss come up. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna bring it back down a little bit. And maybe we'll add just like a splash of moss on the side of the rock too. That could work. <laughs> okay. And I wanted to go ahead and start working on the sword as well. Uh, we can get back to the rocks and add in like details and and um, I'll probably add in like darker sides, um, the like lighter sides that are kind of facing the light and stuff, but I want to definitely block in the sword um, before we run out of time because I also want to show you guys a cool trick for lighting. Um, and I want to be make sure I fit that in. This hour just goes by so fast. I always have so many plans and it's just like, wow, the time's already gone. So I'm gonna block in. I also wanna make sure, I really wanted to add like kind of like a gold color to the sword. So I'm gonna do that same trick that I did earlier, or I'm gonna grab my, my gold color that I typically use in my color palette and I'm gonna lower the opacity and grab that color. That's me every stream, hours fly by. I know, right? Seriously. So I'm not gonna make this sword entirely gold but a really cool trick with clipping masks that I use a lot is that I will, if I have one singular shape um, that might have maybe like a lot of detail in it and I want to add different colors to it or something, I'll just block in the whole shape with one single color. And then I will go back, make a clipping mask and lower the opacity again so I can see my sketch. And I'm going to grab another color and just paint right into that shape that I already created. So I don't even have to worry about, you know, like being careful or anything about going outside of the, the shape that I created. Um, it just makes things a lot faster. Okay, so now we have that kind of blocked in a little bit. Um, I'm going to also lower the opacity of this sketch as well. So I wanted to be able to show you guys this lighting trick that I do for a lot of my work, um, including the night, actually, the, the a night animation that I showed you a little bit ago. Um, I added in the last minute, um, actually, we can pull it up really quick here. Um, just so I can show you guys what it looks like again, for those of you that weren't here in the uh, beginning of the stream. Um, Instagram, let's see. Oops. Um, hmm. It's actually not getting pulled up, so. I'm won't <laughs> if you guys want to see it, you'll be able to see it on um, my my Instagram. But I put this overlay layer um, over top of everything, and it kind of just made it look like some uh, like 
sunlight rays were coming through, um, just highlighting the back of the night. So we're kind of going to do that uh, with the sword as well. And I might add some like dapple effects too on the ground. Um, so let's grab this, one of these watercolor brushes. I've noticed that with Kyle's watercolor brushes, for some reason, the, the larger wash brushes seem to be not compatible with the overlay layer for some reason. I usually use um, this big... Uh, like wash brush in Photoshop um, to be able, or no, it's this one. It's like big, I think it's called like big 500 or something. Um, and I usually will use that because it's a really soft edge and it's really nice for lighting, um, but I can't really do it in fresco. So we kind of have to go back to our watercolor brushes and find a different brush that will be good for this. Um, let's see, let's make a new brush here. And I'm gonna grab I'm going to grab my really bright yellow that I really like to use for um, this lighting effect. This could possibly work. Um, let's see here. This one might work actually. Um, okay, so we have a layer. I'm going to make this. Where can we get Kyle's brushes? Um, in Fresco, just open up the brush menu and then go down to the very bottom and press the plus button and then press discover new brushes. It will um, bring up uh, Kyle's catalog and you can follow brushes and you can also download them. Um, and they're also compatible with Photoshop as well, although you download them in Photoshop a little bit of a different way. Um, but as long as you have a CC subscription, all of Kyle's brushes are free. So I am going to Go ahead and make a layer over top of everything. Actually, you know what? I'm it's not going to be over top of everything. I'm going to bring my foreground trees above the light because I don't want the light to be in front of the foreground trees. I want the foreground trees to be in front of the light. So it looks like the light is coming in between the foreground and middle trees. So, we're going to take this lighting layer and we're going to go to the layer properties, not the brush properties, but the layer properties. And we're going to go to overlay. Here we go. Let's see if this brush is compatible. Yes, it is. Sweet. We're going to toss in. Don't really like that angle. Let's try that again. Toss in some light rays. And typically with light rays, this might take me a couple tries. Um, they get wider as they get closer to your object. Think of uh, kind of like almost like a funnel. It gets wider towards the bottom. And it's always nice to maybe have like two or three kind of like of differing sizes. And I usually also make them a little bit brighter towards the source because it kind of dissipates as well as it goes down. I might even make these a little bit bigger just so it, it highlights the whole sword. It looks a little nicer. And I think actually this color might not be perfect for this color palette that we have going on. I might change it a little bit. Let's lock the transparency. And also, if you feel like it's a little bit too intense, feel free to just turn down the opacity too. Or you can also go in with clear mode and erase it back as well. Just kind of pull it back. It's a little bit too much. It's very orange. Ah, that looks a little better.
Okay. And then I also wanted to, we can unlock the transparency on this layer. And I'm going to grab, we can go back to the recent brushes, new feature, recent brushes. Uh, if you're in the all tab of your, of your pixel brushes, you can just go to recent and it shows all of the brushes that you've used in this document. Um, so I can go back to this watercolor brush that we were using a little bit ago. And I think I'm going to attempt at least <laughs> to add a bit of a dapple effect. So I'm just kind of putting in some spots, no rhyme or reason necessarily, but you kind of just want to make them all look a little bit different. Cause <clears throat> if you think about it, like all of the leaves on the trees are in different spots and they're going to create a very uh, non-uniform lighting effect on the ground. And sadly, I wanted to show you guys the the tree lesson as well, but it looks like we're out of time. Oh my goodness. I didn't have time to go through my whole lesson, but um, maybe uh, another stream I'll have I'll have time to be able to go over that with you guys. Um, but um, I'm pretty happy with how this lighting effect is turning out so far. If we zoom out a bit, you guys can really kind of see where like the direction it's going. Um, but it is about time to go over um, uh, community entries. All right, so we can hop on over to Photoshop. Oh, uh, not Photoshop, Instagram. Here's my night, you guys, by the way. Now it, it can get popped up. Um, if you guys wanted to just see the little bit of an animation that I did um, as well uh, with the lighting effect there, that's a, a good example of the overlay effect. Um, but let's pop on over to our uh, entries. So I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom, actually, because early on we got um, some all the Monty Python quotes on this one. <laughs> um, we got some uh, Excalibur entries. So this one I thought was really beautiful. Um, this person has done a handful of uh, Draw This In Your Styles and she's done all of the power prompts so far as well. Um, I really love the addition of the birch trees um, and the the crayon texture, like or colored pencil texture that she used to add in details on the birch trees are really is really neat. Um, it it almost feels like these trees are cut out of paper and then like colored on with colored pencils. And I think that that's such a cool technique. Um, like all of these little knots in the wood and and the creases and everything. They uh, she did a really great job emulating the look of birch trees, um, really beautiful. And I love the simplicity of the sword as well. Um, really nice color palette. Um, so I'm gonna pop, let's see, pop back up towards the top because then we started get, oh yeah, here's another one. Really love this design as well. Man, look at that rock. Man, I'm envious of this rock. That is awesome. Um, and, it, and I really love how they added um, kind of like, a uh, like a, a glittering, glowing, magical effect to it as well. That kind of adds a little bit of a storytelling element. Um, and then like this, the the shape of this tree looks very like Renaissance style. Um, and I think that that's pretty cool. And they they made it look like it's on like an old piece of uh, parchment. Um, I really love the the addition of the. Uh, the different Renaissance style shapes. I think that that's a really nice, it adds a lot of character. Um, and also the hilt on this one is really neat as well. Um, let's see, scrolling around. We also got a ton of night entries as well. Um, some of these really cool night entries um, from Crispy Art Boy. He's done so many entries. Oh my goodness. Here's another one from him as well. Really awesome uh, night knight armor oh i love this helmet here on the left um and he's got like a skull on his shoulder and stuff very very cool um and then we also have uh a couple more entries here really quick before we get uh have to do our outro really cool uh take on this one it's got like an eye in the hilt and it's also in like an iceberg which is a, a different take on it 
really neat. Um, and this one was one of my favorites as well. I really love the simple shapes on this. Also this rock, really great uh, shapes on this rock and these trees too. These really jagged, like zigzag shaped trees and the flowers on the ground, really beautiful blue color palette too. And the, this hilt really pops and stands out against uh, uh, the, the blue background. Really beautiful. Oh, and this one, last one really quick, you guys. This is actually a panoramic image. Really, really awesome. Look at this. It's a Final Fantasy um, fan art piece. And then they, but they did it for Medieval March. So, so cool. This is the whole piece here. It says someone lost, someone's lost their sword again. <laughs> um, so beautiful. These trees are stunning. Oh my gosh. The, the texture on these trees, the whole scene, the color palette, just beautiful. Uh, the characters, everything. All right, you guys, that is about it for me today. Thank you all so much for joining us. And I hope to see you next week um, for um, Apothecary Herbs. That is our next prompt uh, for Monday at 2.30 p.m. PST. Um, and thank you all so much for uh, doing all of your entries as well. Um, and I can't wait to see more of your entries in the future. Uh, thank you all so much for joining and I'll see you next Monday. Bye guys. Join Cody Bear as she hosts Power Prompts in Evil March, week four, Apothecary Herbs, every Monday at 2.30 Pacific, only on Adobe Live.